Hello! Welcome again to the fourth episode of the Dark Side Live Sale. Thank you for joining us. I'm your man, Ruben St. Ruben. To my right, as always, the beautiful Paul. And we're here to show you this week's latest and greatest of the comic book world from Marvel, DC, and all your favorite independent publishers. First, if this is your first time signing on with us, if you could please click the link, give us some of your information. So if you do participate in the live sale, we can know where to ship your stuff to. Um, shipping will be a flat rate of $9.99 and all invoices will be billed on Saturday. Ooh, I think that's it for that part. So without further ado, we're gonna jump into this exciting week of comics. Yes, we are. Super stoked, man. Thank uh, you so much for joining us. My favorite thing that came out this week, uh, simply because the hardcover trade paperback came out last week, is Alien. Issue 5 coming out today. We've got the regular and the variant. Uh, if you were in the store last week, you could have bought the complete story. It's that original screenplay. Mm -hmm. The original Dan O'Bannon screenplay. The way it was intended. Yes. Uh, next door to that, we've got The Amazing Spider-Man, still on the last rights story arc. Last remains. Last yes. remains. Yeah, we don't have any variants for that. We sold out. We had like three variants for that, and they're all gone. It's a hot book, man. I I love all Spidey, most Spidey tales. I take that back. I love most Spidey tales. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, American Vampire, 1976. Uh, we only have the variant left. We sold out of the regular cover. Uh, it's another Scott Snyder vampire story. Always good. Always love them vamps. To the left is Avengers 39. I think I'm right. Avengers 39. Um, Pretty awesome book. This is coming after their huge beef with Mephisto and the uh, Fist of Khonshu and the Moon Knight. This is actually, uh, what's the word, prelude? Prelude. Depends it, on what you're trying to say. Uh, okay, it's the story of the Phoenix in prehistoric times. It's a, Does it go back to the One Million Avengers? What, what do you mean, One Million? Well, like this. Oh, this, this series started with like the B mm. Avengers BC. Yes, and that's for our viewers to find out. So pick yourself up a copy or one of these delicious nullified copies, which has sick artwork. Mm. Oh man. It's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember the artist's name. Anyway, Stegman. It's Stegman. Is it really Stegman? I don't know. He's doing all the yeah, Marvel variants. True, true, true. It probably is Ryan Stegman. And to the left, we got Batman Black and White, the very first issue. Yes. Uh, the Batman Black and White's a lot of fun, just black and white. Uh, it's a compilation of short stories by different writers and artists. They're a lot of fun. Uh, we've got the regular cover, the Momoko cover. Artist of the Year. She everything she does is amazing, and we've got the third cover down here. I don't know who that artist was. Right, I don't just... deserve my attention. <laughs> um, and to the left of that, oh, Bill and Ted. I still haven't seen the new movie. Yeah, you haven't, man. It's uh, it's cool to see them all grown up. I love the originals <laughs> outside of you know some cringy stuff. Yeah, cringy. And, I mean, the movie itself, the book is uh, a little yeah. better than the movie. Hmm. So that's, far. That's, I, I, that's I, hard to believe. No, no, not, oh, no. Uh, trust me. Um, what is it called? Doom? No, we're doomed. Um, it's a little bit funnier than the movie. The movie, mm -hmm. the new movie, is comparable to, like, a Tyson Roy Jones Jr. fight. A couple of little dudes just I doing something. I don't know what that means. No? Oh, okay. No, no sports fans. I can understand. I'll read the room. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, I believe next up is Bite Size. Is that the one that is? It's next. Um, that is from superstar writer Colin Bunn for AWA Publishing. Uh, it's pretty fun. If you remember the movie uh, Batteries Not Included, it's kind of that. Mm. Robots involved. It's, it's kind of that, but at Christmas time. So it's a it's one of those stories that definitely was inspired by Gremlins. The dog's name mm. is Gizmo. Uh, it's so far, it's lighthearted and fun and family friendly. Sounds very good cute. Christmas timey. I don't love the artwork though, but it's mm. so far it's good. What don't you like about the artwork? Is, it, is that a one shot or? That uh, no, that is a five issue series, four issue series. Four issue. Um, 
yeah, the artwork, it's it's weird because it's the style is kind of cartoony, but then the coloring and shading is like attempting to be like more photorealistic. So it's a weird, Oof. almost looks like an early CG animated character where they tried to get the lighting on this not great designed character. But the story makes up for it. The story is fun. The story is a lot of fun. I read I read a little synopsis about it. I thought it was kind of it was cute in my head. Yeah. I totally made up a whole different scenario on how it turned out. You know, they don't tell you exactly what happened. Yeah, I mean, I would love it if it turned into a gore fest, but mm. I, that's unlikely. <laughs> that's well, where my head was angled. I mean, too. it would be something that would be a fun like Netflix original holiday movie. True that. Well, stay still. Oh, I'm shaking it too much. <laughs> yeah, it's the in studio earthquakes. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. <laughs> what um, we do have another Colin Bun coming up. This is Colin Bun Week. Colin Bun Week. What? Yes. What's next? I didn't see that. See here. That was B. What's next? See crossover. Cross. No, no, Conan. Conan. Conan the Barbarian. What? I'm not touching the table this time. <laughs> You're pacing. Oh yeah. My bad. I'm trying to stay in one spot. I got these X's that mark it. <laughs> so Conan. This week's issue, uh, we've got the regular and the variant cover. Um, I have not read any of the new Conan, so I have no opinion. I um, I couldn't help but laugh when I saw the main cover of Conan and how one big red bulgy eye is just peeking around that sword. It put a smile on my face every time I saw it. Yeah. yeah. Conan versus pink eye. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's got Corona. Mm -hmm. Conan. 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 Moving on. Coronan 2020. After <laughs> Coronan is crossover. Best book of the month thus far. Uh, number two. We've got the regular cover, the blank cover, which is peeking out behind the C cover, which is the Virgin variant cover, which was the one in ten. And that is just the regular cover without any words on it, no barcodes, no nothing. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, and the ver that Virgin variant is $10. What's so good about it? About the artwork or crossover. it's it's been an excellent original story. Um Donnie Cates knocking it out of the park. Again. Who, what's his name? Don Nold. Oh, we have this argument. Cates. I feel like I do this it's every a week. Recurring segment. Yeah. It's, it's a callback from the Cates first his name. Yeah. Ronald Cates has been killing it with um I'm joking with a crossover. Um it's a really interesting story. Basically, every one of your favorite comic book heroes comes to life but with that you know all the events and super cool super villains um and it's a pretty strong run third one's coming in hot and it's got a uh cool kind of spoiler cover coming out in january but this is number two definitely something you're gonna want to mm -hmm. pick up because they're building up to that major crossover and when mr cates is involved and shaw's drawn it you know it's gonna be a banger yes, they are saying that the third issue is going to be mind-blowing yeah so so you got to get that build up. Number two, it's important for the collection. Uh, a little bit of a spoiler. It is an image comic, mm -hmm. so it's not too far. It's not too mind blowing to say that Spawn is on the cover of the variant cover. Mm -hmm. So for episode, or episode three, <laughs> for issue three, issue three, which oh. I do believe comes out in like January. Yeah, it'll be a month from now. Very excited for it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that story is building up great. And next on the seas, we had... Well, that's the end down there. All right. Yeah. We're doing all right. So while we're doing this, swapping them out, these are some uh, nice C uh, complete story arcs we've got for some mini-series. Have a little gander at those, see if you are interested. We've got plenty of back issues to come. Pop them up right I'm assuming here. that I'm not muted. Otherwise, I would be talking to myself. <laughs> Mike's still hot, right? Is that, that Electro Saga is the Frank Miller. That is the Frank Miller. I believe that is the first Electro miniseries, or oh, first standalone miniseries. Mm -hmm. Very exciting, considering all the uh, hot news about Electro Saga. Right What's so hot about that news? Oh. Are you going to find out? So, no. Okay. Is it safe to say? I feel like everyone should. Well, yeah, no, we mentioned it last week. week. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. The last, the most recent issue of Daredevil finds Matt Murdock in jail, dressed as Daredevil, because apparently there's some law in the Marvel Universe where you can 
dress up as you superhero while in prison. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. They, they don't want to violate the secret identity. Right. right. Yeah. Um, so Electra is taking up the Daredevil mantle, and so that's the big deal with Electra right now. So these are all in fantastic shape there. And underneath it, we've got a 1988 Black Panther miniseries, which those books are pristine condition outside of a little corner ding on this one and some fingerprints that ate away the ink on that. But other I than that... I would like to point out that I did not do that. And that's, no, 30, that's Gravity's fault. That's 30 for the set and then 15 for the set. Correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct. That's a good deal. Perfect Christmas deal. All right. Then next up, we got Detective Comics. Did we have a variant left over? Yeah, we did. And that's super cool Superman variant. Is that the one? No. Oh, no, I'm picking the actual super... That's... Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm jumping the gun here. Detective Comics. Yeah, you're right. The ongoing Lee Bermejo variant covers. Always outstanding. Always gorgeous. Always grim. What is next? Oh, yeah. You read that, right? Did you read that one? The... No, I did not read this no? week's. But I have been getting a lot of joy out of them short stories that they've been compiling into those uh, Dark Knights of Death Metal there. I haven't read that because I, I read them in I read those series in complete story arcs, but I did um, I was told that Mark Wade showed up writing in this and he hasn't written for DC in a long time, so that's very exciting. I had someone conjecturing and hoping that Mark Wade will take over for uh, Bendis on Superman when he leaves. Really? Yeah. Bendis is Mark Wade would be perfect for Superman. Bendis is a personal hero of mine. I've it's a oh yeah, no, he's big mantle. He's great. All right, Devil's Bride, or yeah, Devil's Red Bride. Three. Devil's Red Bride. Um, have not gotten the chance to read this, have thumbed through it, and kind of like the mm -hmm. artwork. I'm kind of intrigued on that alone. Um, yeah, no, I, I missed out on issue one. I haven't read it yet, uh, but I've got it. The customers that are buying it really enjoy it. I personally, I, it's tough for me to jump in like on the third issue, so I mm -hmm. always try to backtrack, get that first one. Um, well, again, like this is going to be a mini series, so. Mm -hmm. Couple months, we'll have a trade for it. True that, true that. And next up is something I was interested in reading, did not get any time to. Disaster Inc. Oh no! God, man, I gotta stop trying to memorize. Oh no, this. you're right. Oh, okay, I'm just like no, I have not read it. I read the first issue, wasn't in love with it, uh -huh. but again, there are some people that are really into it. Um, can you give me a short like what it is? Um, first issue is it kind of sets up that. There's a section, a part of Japan that uh, is irradiated. They don't really go into detail, but that's like it's a no man's land. Mm -hmm. And then there's like a black market tour industry there. Uh, and then at the end of the issue, like there's some secret, almost like shadowed, almost like a samurai type figure, like no killing kidding. somebody. And that's that's all I remember. Oh, so it didn't set you up. It didn't pull you in to maybe check it, out the second one. It's one of those ones that there were more interesting things that week. True that, yeah. And that's a tough one. You're competing with multiple great stories during the week. It's hard to uh, really sell, you know, something. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Oh, Firefly. Firefly, number 23. Regular and variant. I mean, Firefly. Yeah. <laughs> what else can <laughs> I say? the Mandalorian or not? Mm. That's the debate this week. Which one is better? Really? One? Now, some uh, people say that the Mandalorian has two seasons, so therefore, by default, it's better than <laughs> right. Fire more of it exists. Mm -hmm. but, uh, well, I mean, if you're just going for this, like the filmed versions, uh, at least with Firefly, you have like you have an ending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas Mandalorian, who knows how long it's going to go, and if it might start sucking. Yeah, never. it could. It, it will never end, and it will never suck. I, my fingers crossed too. Firefly is so much better than Mandalorian. What? It's Absolutely it is. Firefly is definitely has more heart to it. It, it, mm. it. It's got heart and it's got grit and amazing characters and you, you care so much about all of them. <laughs> the writing is fantastic. It's just these plucky go-getters um, trying to make it out in like the Garam universe. Oh, it's so good. Mandal I mean, Mandalorian is shiny. <laughs> yes, yes it is. And he's tough. It's the gnarliest space western ever written for the most part. I mean, every episode is... opens up with him kicking the snot out of a group of people most times. It's there's so much 
I mean, Firefly had it too, Man. but uh, uh, samurai and Western homages. Mm -hmm. Just cinematically, there's stuff in Mandalorian that is like shot for shot from Kurosawa movies. Really? Mm -hmm. I, that I had no idea. Oh, yeah. Kurosawa yeah. was a big influence on Lucas. Yeah. The whole universe. Dang, man. I have the same birthday as Akira Kurosawa. I knew that. One of the greatest directors of all time. When, when, it, <laughs> when is your birthday? The yeah. Same day as Akira Kurosawa. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you can look that up on yeah. Google. I'll Google it. You're Just not right IMDb. now. Just not right now. I share the same birthday as Selena. The Selena. Selena Gomez? No, not Selena Gomez. <laughs> Selena. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know her last name. It was just the artist Selena, the one that was shot. <laughs> just Selena, yeah, exactly. Yeah. April Jennifer 16th. J Lo, yeah, exactly. And not the same person. But. Um, uh, argument from Bobby Lynn Walter: East meets, meets West. Mm -hmm. Maybe better than either. Well, the, it hasn't been filmed yet. You have to wait for the Amazon show. Well, yeah, yeah but they're doing an Amazon show. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, Amazon's doing everything. Yeah. Hickman really hasn't had anything. No. Like. You know, film, I guess, yeah. is the, the word for it. So that'll be exciting. You know, there's he's had hints of things like story arcs mm -hmm. thrown into other things but... yeah, for a long time now, too. Yeah, but yeah, East of West will be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so next, where are we at? Flash, the, yes, the Flash 767. Mm -hmm. Um, that is the Endless Winter Part Two. Mm -hmm. And while the rest of the DC universe is trying to deal with this. <laughs> endless winter um you got flash struggling with black adam black adam's trying to hold him together and there's a small story on some of black adam's involvement with uh, mm -hmm. the before mentioned endless winter my i think i brought it up with the last endless winter book it's very they're doing the same thing that the avengers did um at the beginning of their run which i guess they're probably still doing is that avengers bc where they do like the version of the Avengers from way back in the day. Mm. They're doing the same thing with Endless Winter, but a thousand years ago. So you've got uh, Hippolyta, 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 um, <laughs> and you've got Black Adam, and you've got uh, sw not Swamp Thing, but one of the not our current Swamp Thing, but ancient Swamp Thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. What's his face? What do you call it? OG the Guardian Swamp of the Green. Guardian of the Green. Um, there's a variant for the five. Mm -hmm. Yes, right down here. Are there two variants? Is there? there? No. Oh, there's no, just not. that. That's just that. Um, Those are other things behind me. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've been enjoying it's the Endless Winter, which we've got another one coming up for Superman, which is a standalone. Mm -hmm. It feels like it reminds me of the Justice League that I really enjoyed in like the late '90s, like that Grant Morrison era. Like it's so far, it's been fun. Yeah, um, this has been the first uh, installment of the Endless Winter I've read, and I was thoroughly impressed. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to go back and pick up the ones I should have last week, just as all of you should have too, because it. The one. Well, yeah, the this one. This being part two. But excellent story so far. I'm so, enthralled. Well, uh, Giga? Giga? Giga, yes. I haven't read either of these yet. Mm -hmm. um, again, people like it. Big giant robots. This week's the second issue. Post-apocalyptic giant robots. So you don't want to fall behind too much. But is it better than Mandalorian? <laughs> yes. <I don't> think so. <laughs> yes. You, got, you guys be the judge. Pick it up and you tell us whether or not it's better than the Mandalorian because I highly doubt it. And if you hate the Mandalorian, I'm not even going to have that conversation with you. Just check it out. Let us know how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for your support, Paul. I appreciate <laughs> you. A Green Lantern? No, no, Goosebumps. Goosebumps. Ah, yes. The child-friendly Goosebumps. What do we got going on in this uh, week's issue? Uh, issue three. IDW. End of story. R.L. Stein, man. R.L. Stein. <laughs> He's a legend. He's doing a, a swampy, swampy thingy sort of story there. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he wrote it. I think he licensed no. his name out. Yeah. He's a brand he's a, now. He's a, yeah, he's kind of like a big He's guy. Jack Black now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Arl Stein? He's an odd looking dude. Yeah. I feel like yeah, he actually he's... appeared in like the first series of the Goosebumps TV show. I know this because I have kids. <laughs> but, yeah, before <laughs> Jack Black, mistake. there was actually R.L. Stein playing himself. Yes. Yeah, it took me a second to get what you had said. Actually, he's Jack Black now. I saw the movie. He, isn't he uh, was in the Tales from the Crypt EC Comics documentary on the Tales from the Crypt uh, DVD. Nice. Great documentary. Yeah. Where'd you get a hold of that uh, DVD? Store. 
Uh, just the, the documentary is on YouTube now. But okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's it was a special feature on the DVD that you would buy where you buy DVDs. I really appreciate all your in-depth answers, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Thank you so I much. Mean... <laughs> <laughs> but Goosebumps, yeah, check it out. Yeah. Um, Kid-friendly monsters. Are mm -hmm. those rated all ages? I think mm -hmm. they yeah. are. Yeah. So. Yep. Well, you will uh, find them in our kids section. I was also curious, and I'm sorry I waited so long to ask. Uh, bite, bite size. Mm -hmm. Was that all ages? Uh, so far. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, AWA ha does it hasn't been reading their comics, mm -hmm. um, but so far that's perfectly family friendly. Again, I would love it if it turned into a gore fest. But... That'd be cool. And totally out of nowhere, like next issue, let's make a right turn and just gore yeah. first page. So far, first friendly. twenty panels. Or we could have a nice wholesome story. I mean, come on. That's true too. All right. <laughs> what What do you guys at home prefer? The wholesome story, or would you like to see? Well, you haven't read, bite. Yeah. No. But would unless you, you have. Yeah, and if somehow you had, chime in. Let us know if you'd rather see a complete gore fest or something a little more. Uh, family we also friendly. have hats. We'll get into the hats. <laughs> Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy number nine. Is Peter Quill alive? Has been traversing the universe for the past couple decades? Is it old man Peter Quill? Is that the storyline we're it picking is not up? Old on? Man Peter Quill. I, I'm trying to give him, like, oh. really, could be possibly <laughs> any of these things. He's, he's doing the what if. <laughs> yeah, possibly any of these things. The only way to mm -hmm. know for sure right. is by picking up a copy and finding out for yourself. <laughs> um, I do like the angle Gardens of the Gal Galaxy have been going. Um, I'm not entirely sure if they're going to be tying in to the big event, but like the little synopsis I read did have some, did mention some names that kind of had me believe like, oh, if he's a part of this and he's responding to what had happened last week in the King and Black event, maybe somewhere down the line they're going to oh, intertwine. But I haven't seen anything, you know. That's the least descriptive description I've heard in a long time. I've been getting really good at vagity. Vagity? Is that a word? Vagary. Vagary. Vagosity. Am I still I think pacing? Rose is tired of us. <laughs> that was quick. We're not even through the Fs yet. Or, As what? we just did a G. G. <laughs> We're not even through the Gs yet. Um, What are we looking at now? <laughs> After Guardians of the Galaxy 9, we have... Oh, homesick pilots! Homesick yeah. pilots! I Number thoroughly one. enjoyed it. Um, I'm definitely gonna read that tonight once I purchase it. What is it about? There's though? a Fugazi reference. What? You know, I love the musical references, right? Yes, it is mm -hmm. uh, early '90s uh, California punk kids uh, um, going into a haunted house, and haunted house things happen. I, I mean, it's, it's a like different that. kind of haunted house story, and I'm very excited to see where it's going to go. Homesick Pilots. That sounds like maybe like the name of a 90s band. Hmm. It's almost like these 90 punk kids, 90s punk kids are in a band called Homesick Pilots. That's, and I, I hadn't been in. All right, all right. That's got, enough spoilers. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. And then <laughs> we got a variant. We for have, that. We've got two cute. variants. Yes, mm -hmm. the artwork is that's awesome. That's a number one, so mm -hmm. good get could get hot soon, so it, pick up your copies. It is image. You never know what's going to happen with image comics. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I really do like these color schemes. Like, is that something that is throughout like the comic itself? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because a lot of times when you've got a comic, like yeah. the cover is just not indicative yes. of the actual content. Mm -hmm. Every That's time I pick up an Alex Ross cover, I'm disappointed <laughs> yeah, by the inside. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he color and ink every panel? Well, yeah, in, exactly. Like, six years. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, no, Homesick Pilots is a lot of fun. The artwork is consistent throughout. There's actually a really cool uh, splash page, uh, which is really kind of confused me because like it's there's it starts here and it starts here and it's like one image and the panels kind of tell the story like this. Mm -hmm. And so like I was reading normally and then I was like, I got to here and I'm like, wait a second. I had to go back down here. And do this. Tossed the wacky panels at you. That's cool. It's good. It's really good. It helps you I mean, when, when panels are set up and constructed like this, I, like that. I think it helps like really hone in on detail because now you're hitting every panel like, oh, I skipped one, so now I got to go back check it out and stuff like yeah. that. I kind of appreciate when artists do that. It's really fun when a visual medium uses the visual part. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. No, completely. That's uh, my thesis. <laughs> <laughs> you pass. <laughs> 
Um, coming up next. Oh, well, that's the end of the end line of the right here. for this. So why don't you take a look at the ones that we just did, and then we will... Yeah. Yeah. Probably condense the, uh, the back issues to set. Mm -hmm. And while we are setting this stuff up for the next run of comic books, I do like to remind, would like to remind you guys about the D20 sale we have here in store all through the month of December. If you have made any prior purchases and have your little scratch off card, do not scratch them at home. Bring them up here and scratch them in front of us for some extra savings. Save up to what, 25%? You can get upwards of 25%. That is the absolute maximum discount. It's a good deal, though. Sweating through my deodorant. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I really do like the covers on this. Yeah, um, there's one of them that is intended to be like a poster, like a concert poster, mm -hmm. but I've never seen a concert poster that looks like that. Interesting. My aesthetic. Yeah. Like the, that pink, blue, purple, mm -hmm. unicorn kind of a thing. I'm into it. We had some uh, discrepancies with the ABC order, which I'm positive is my fault. I've been practicing all week, too, in my head. Made it all the way up to G. And that's why I stumbled with the F earlier today. So what's the first issue here, Lock and Key? Yes, ma'am. From the Sandman universe, we got Lock and Key. Uh, that is number 10? Number zero. No, number zero. Zero. This is, uh, I didn't get a chance to look at it, but it is the first in the Lock and Key Sandman universe crossover. Uh, very excited for it. If you like either of those brands, mm -hmm. Lock and Key or Sandman, uh, I don't know if it's going to go into like any of the Lucifer or Books of Dreams or Dreaming. Or yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I wonder if they'll have depth. That would be awesome. It would. It would be or awesome. Any of the endless. That would be. Yes. That would be so, awesome. That is a must-have for anybody who loves this. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I ran out of wrap. It's all good, pal. Right next to that is the Namor King and Black tie-in. Um, that's no number one on that. We'll I forgot to read that. You forgot to read it. But I, ju I judged based on last week's tie-in that I didn't have to. Because I'm, I'm just going to stick with the core King and Black story. Honestly, uh, man, you are so right about that. But I think picking this up sheds more light to, I mean, all the conflicts going on like during King and Black. Mm -hmm. Kind of mentions yeah. the whole Atlantis, uh, Black Tide, ties in... Um, me, I, they never once show like Namorita, but they do talk about her and stuff. Well, mm. no, I don't think they show her at all, but you got to check it out. It's wonderful. Have it for the collection. Right. So you can check it off your checklist for the King and Black checklist. You're a real collector. Yes. Move. It is nice when they include the checklist so that you mm -hmm. you know what you need. And it's done it on. They've done it on the last page of every installment. So. This Echoes of Civil War, you just had no idea mm -hmm. what was going to be in what. Yeah. And you just kind of had to base it on, like, the header on the image. Mm. Oh. True that. Civil War, still near and dear yes. to my heart. It's nice when we somebody... <laughs> I got another 15-minute segment I can do on that. Check this out. I, like I was thinking though. about it last night when I was on the can. It's, when Instead, tell me about Lady Death. Lady Death. Sure. Uh, not much to say about Lady Death. This is the... Blasphemy number one? Yes. I think it's only a two-issue series. Um, I mean, it's Lady Death. If you're into Lady Death, cool. If you're not, cool. She's got stories it's, for this. It's a very, very finite uh, fan base. It's, uh, it's boobs and violence. Yeah. But you know... Yeah. Isn't as good as The Mandalorian. Is not. Or is, is it? Is still pretty good. In and of so that's itself, for right? people who are fans of like Red Sonja and Vampirella and like all that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, kind of. Lady Mechanica? Mm, no. no. Not. I think Mechanica. less story. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> less story. Oh, so basically Xenoscope. Yes. Yes. I'm surprised that Lady Death has not ended up there. Um, Brian Pulido is a weird guy. So is Brian Blitzy. Ooh, sick burn. Don't let her talk to you like that, man. It's your show. No, I'm playing. I'm just trying to start stuff. <laughs> um, 
Next up, we have... Was that Marauders? Marauders. Marauders, 16. More X-Men. Yep. And it was a decent issue. Definitely worth the pickup. Um, we're dealing with the Black King now. Um, if you guys know who that is. So not the King in Black. Not the King in Black. Um, oh, man, I can't believe I'm blanking on his actual name. Shaw? Sebastian mm -hmm. Shaw? Yeah. Yeah. The Black 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 the Hellfire Club. So it's cool to see them up and running and messing around. So Is he still sad from last week? Are you thinking of Mr. Sinister? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was so bummed out. I hope you guys picked up Hellion 7 because <laughs> it, it was gripping. So and, the Hellfire, is this going to be strong with Emma, Emma Frost? Um, There is mention of her in the book. Mm -hmm. For sure. She's She's been in a lot of, like, most of the mm -hmm. X, X stories recently. I mean, she's the white queen. queen. She, yes. She's going to be there. Um, you know that there's a Red Queen now? Aside from the one in Resident Evil? Yes. What? Who that is? Uh, it's not Kitty Pride. it's Kate Pride. Because she is a good, an adult and uh, goes by Kate now. She also dropped Shadow Cat? I think so. She just oh. goes by Kate, Captain Kate Pride. Captain Kate Pride. Cool, man. What, what, uh, Marauders. Yeah, true that. Um, 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 um is she in a branch of the service to ascertain that officer status? I don't know what that sentence meant. Like, I'm just using big words. It sounds for The white for queen audience. brought her in. Emma Frost brought her in. It's true, true, true. Yeah. true. That, that, that true. automatically you makes you a captain? You can just, and, and, you know, you don't have to be a captain to call yourself. Like, yeah, true that. Like Captain Crunch. Like Doctor Strange. Captain Crunch sure is actually an actor. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was a call. Back. <laughs> it was a callback from last week. You know, Steve Strange. Okay, what I'm about sure. Star Lord. Like, what? He just made the name for himself. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> um. Oh, Mighty Morphin number two. Mighty Morphin number two. We got up next. Um, I'll let you talk about that. That's your generation. Oh yeah, Mighty Morphin number two. I, Mighty Morphin oh, the whole series. As I, I open a beer. Have not been. Uh, this is not a beer. This is a family-friendly <laughs> live show. And it's a diet Mountain Dew. It's 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 a non-branded citrus beverage. Oh, yeah, 100%. That's what it is. Yep. Right. It's Mountain Lightning. But we got Mighty Morphin, too. If you guys like the Power Rangers, you're going to like this. Pick it up. Moving on to North Mythology. Well, so Mighty Morphin, like, <laughs> is, there, is that going, like, like, at the same time as another title just yes. called Power Rangers? Yes, mm -hmm. that is correct. Okay, so they the split really last month. Okay. I, 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 you keep calling my generation. I watched the first season, and then it, I fell off. Then it was all about Pokemon comic books for me, and not the Mighty Morphin ones. But I do. I, I've been, they've been killing it on the cover art, and yeah. that's yeah. really all I could give you. Um, yeah. Because I haven't really thumbed through it or read it, but every cover I've seen from Mighty Morphin and the other Power Rangers run has been pretty sharp. You mean Power Rangers? What did I say? You said the other one. Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Power Rangers, yeah. I've never been able to keep up with any of the Power Ranger. It's... Like, I'm just too old for that whole thing because, like, there's just so many different characters and different... They have, like, some of them are dinosaurs and some of them are not. And some of them have coins and some of them have... <laughs> other things i just don't like there's a lot well, going on you can you can start watching them with your kids i have oh, that's I where have. i fell off like after the first season they had power rangers turbo ninja they had power rangers dino force power rangers this and that and i there was just too much it was overwhelming i mean there was the original and then the first spinoff was zeo oh yeah that was with the little gems and you mm -hmm. oh that was sick but they made turbo movie before anyway uh mighty Morphin power rangers those covers are delicious they are cool um, next to that is Norse mythology. Ah, Neil Gaiman's Norse mythology. Neil Gaiman's North, North mythology. Norse. North. North. Norse. 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 Norse mythology. Yes. Nailed mythology. it. Norse mythology. Wow. All right. Well, <laughs> let's not put me on was the it, spot. Was that Monopoly? <laughs> it was the title <laughs> of that book. And, and just That's... to clarify, it's Neil Gaiman, not Neil Gaiman. Sorry. I'm just saying, guys, <laughs> there are people in the universe who pronounce it diamond. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that's right. Okay. You don't think it's right or you know it's not right? I don't know Neil personally. Yeah. yeah. No, you don't. Like, unless 
the person with that name tells me I'm saying it incorrectly. I don't even pronounce my own name. I wish you guys so. never gave me that choice of that second name because now I'm going to try my hardest not to say Neil Gaiman, but Neil Guy Game Gaiman. But there we go. We ruined it. <laughs> Trevor. Uh, you know, of course, he's one of the greatest. And there's the variant down here. Is that oh, up there? Yeah, right on you beautiful, beautiful David Mac cover. David Mac and Alex Ross, two best artists in the comic industry. Agreed. That real that level of realism is just ugh. feels like you can high five him right off the page. What do we got next? You got the list. Dude, I've I've come to understand this list to be <laughs> Well at least it false. appears to be alphabetically correct this time. Yeah, um, Origins 2. Except that like, we don't even got that one, but Origins 2. Origins? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Origins is good. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a weird story. It's post-apocalyptic, like everything is. Mm -hmm. um, Stuff you can kind of pick up from the cover, uh, too. I got that good vibe. Yeah, yeah. The artwork is fantastic. Uh, robot clones... The person who basically ended the world in order for him to fix it. Sounds kind of... Redemption story. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds kind of counterproductive. The guy that dropped the ball in the first place. Let's get that guy back. It's, it's See what he can do. Definitely <laughs> a parable for uh, trusting technology too much. Sure that. Yeah. That's reminding me of like um irredeemable or like ex machina kind of a thing mm -hmm. but maybe not so corporate the movie ex machina not the comic ex machina. the comic okay okay yeah it's been 20 years since i read that <laughs> up next we got red sonia nope Damn it. see like i was saying this <laughs> this um pantomime we got pantomime <laughs> up next we got pantomime um were you able to? No, no, I have not. That? I don't really read Mad Cave comics. Mm -hmm. um, no, for not for any particular reason, other than I haven't found any that I've liked. I am not too well versed in Mad Cave. Do you know off the top of your head? And if you don't, I mean, you just told me that you don't read them. But any other titles that might be somewhat popular that people can relate to at home? Um, well, you seem to be enjoying Terminal Punks. That's Mad Cave. That's Mad Cave. Oh, man, I didn't even commit that to memory. Yeah, no, Terminal Punks have been sick, and we got the second edition coming up a little bit later. But, yeah. Okay, cool. Speaking of another another uh, kind of punk rock band and mm -hmm. stuck in some trouble. Comics and punks go along. Mm hmm What's next? All the Red Sonias. All the oh Red Sonias God. and their many variants. This is the number one in a new story arc. Uh, basically, if you love Red Sonia, you're going to love this. That's all I got. <laughs> I don't think I've ever... Yeah, normally there's a guy who buys all of the Red Sonia covers, but I have not heard from him in several months. Yeah. A little concerned. If you're out there watching, please let us know you're all right. I don't think he knows how to use computers. If <laughs> True. Otherwise, I would have emailed him by now. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Shout out to whoever yeah, they, they do always have great covers in the nicest way yeah, they, through Dynamite. They are great. Um, definitely a step up from the Lady Death content. <laughs> and I, I always like. I just always enjoy watch, uh, looking at the cosplay cover. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, I mean. Yeah. They give me well so yeah. many amazing costume ideas. Oh. Yeah, where would you think I was going? Then? Not where I thought I was going. But no, I do love those cosplay yes. covers too. Um, I'm, I am I'm a little upset that since Red Sonia did was birthed out of the Conan mythology, mm. that she's not at Marvel. Yeah, how that big schism took place and like when was that? Like early '90s. Wow. Uh, uh, real quick, did you say schism? Schism. Yeah, like the Tool song. <laughs> it's schism. schism. Why didn't you correct me, Paul? I'm expecting this from you, buddy. <laughs> I can only do so much. Ah, schism. I'm a a <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> you know what's good though is that means that you learn that word from reading. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like it, you know. It, so. No, he just he grew up in a house where he used the word shiz. <laughs> 
I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna say that's a strong 50 50 and I'm not going to tell you which one I agree with more. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. And honestly, I, all the names of the artists and writers, it's mostly all been read as you do. And that's why I butcher them weekly. So I apologize for all of that. I mean, like I do got, a couple gurus in the room that could guide me, but they like laughing at We're me trying. instead. No, you guys do. And I appreciate it. It's not like this is scripted and we know what you're going to say. That's right. That's Rose true. is the one that really laughs at you. Yes. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it too. It gives me Gives me that confidence though. You know what? A laugh track. Might, Good idea. Might do. Big yeah. things coming for the Dark Side Live <laughs> Show. Big things. Stay uh, tuned. <laughs> from Jamie Tracy. Oh, shizzle. <laughs> <laughs> Rightio, Jamie Tracy. Thanks for logging in with us, good buddy. Um, moving on. Are all the variants? Last one. Like, there's one one different book at the end. Resident Alien. Resident Alien. Two. That comic has had long legs. Like that has been around for such a long mm -hmm. time. I remember mm -hmm. picking that up in the first shop and reading it and loving it. And, yes. And I'm so, and now it's a sci-fi show. Mm -hmm. Yes. I didn't realize that either. So. Very excited. Can't I, wait to watch it. It's a great book. Um, it's a science fi show starring Alan, Alan Tudyk, Tudyk from which, Firefly. What? Another reason why <laughs> Firefly is better than The Mandalorian. <laughs> what if they added him to The Mandalorian after you said that? Yeah. Alan is the alien. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh god, if he played like Max Rebo or something. Thrawn. They introduced. They teased Thrawn. He could be Thrawn. Because he's done a he's good got, job. Great. Tudyk. Yeah, it's got that Whoa, great jawline. jawline. Yep. No, have you seen him as um? Ah, no, he's Mr. Nobody. Yeah. Doomsday. In, uh, Doom Patrol. Yes, yeah, he's a great villain. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's maniacal. So he's the alien, though. He is the alien. Okay. If you watch the trailer, you will be just as excited for it as I am. Is it coming out soon? Like, well, it was supposed it? to hit this summer, but then. You know, like pandemic or something. Some something <laughs> happened. Um, uh, it's supposed pushed. to air in January. Do you know if it's following the first story arc? Or it appears to be. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. It appears to be like that first book. Next. Yeah. They show him out on his fishing boat. Where, where were you able to see the trailer? YouTube. There's a thing. <laughs> what, was it the one he mentioned <laughs> called the internet? I'm and sorry. It's not, it's I thought, I thought not maybe even the trailer. It's like the first seven. They, 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 they no released kidding, the first really. like seven minutes of it. Yes. Oh man, I'm pumped. Yes. When we upgrade the show, we'll like be able to include clips. Yeah. Oh, that would. Yeah. Well, we could just watch things. We could watch mm -hmm. things and then <laughs> tell people as quietly. We could just do like <laughs> reaction shots. Yeah. Of, like us watching the seven coming minutes. soon reaction close ups. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Resident Alien mm -hmm. is a great book, and it's just, it's so much fun. Like, it starts as, like, this kind of traditional, like, fish out of water type thing, like, with an alien twist. And then he gets embroiled in, like, murder mysteries and stuff, uh, because he's pretending to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. This is all something that you would learn, like, in the very first issue. Mm -hmm. So it's not, like, super spoiling anything. Mm -hmm. It's a super fun book. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's and it's for being essentially a murder mystery repeatedly over and over again. It's not dark. It's very lighthearted. It's very touching and uh, what's the word when something is meaningful and wholesome? You're asking me. You're the language, sure, bro. Wholesome's good. Um, wholesome. Meaningful. Yeah. You mean like it has meaning? It's 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 touching, heartwarming, gripping. Gripping, he does grip things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my All right, so I think that's it that, that for the it for that run. run. Is that the it for the new releases or are no, we, no, no, sir. Still, more new releases. We still releases. got some more new releases right. coming your way. What are you thinking, Brian? Lady Death has been around for a long time. Too. So long. So long, but I mean, you know, it, that means that it has some sort of longevity. There's something that's to what it. That means. Well, yeah, that's, that's the exact definition of it. You want to be technical, but and I do. I'm saying that there are some fans out there that small but mighty. Like, and I've met Brian Polito before. He's yeah. short and he wears a big black hat. No, that, that, yeah, that's him. Um, see, I got into 
Evil Ernie because of my love of horror and gore and whatnot. And then I tried reading some of his other stuff, and it's just, it just wasn't for me. Bobby Lynn Blosser says, another word for meaningful and heartwarming is schism. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> Bobby. When, when I'm toasting at his birthday, Shizmatic. I will express my schism. You guys are going to have to tell me when you guys are joking, because I don't think I pick up. Does it? Can I say schism for? Yeah. Did I say it right that time? No. no. Dang. You can Dang. say whatever you want, though. I mean, you, know. you right. said it was schism? It's okay. With a, C, with a hard C. Schism. Schism. schism? Yeah. I thought I was saying Like okay. Skittles. Ah, but that's how I remember it too. There are some people Schism. speaking. Schism. Which, um, there are some people that say that uh, ex machina should be uh, pronounced ex, ex machina. Mm -hmm. So, like the like the channel you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Uh, the rise of Ultraman. It's never into Ultraman. Oops. Much like Power Rangers. Hmm. Ultraman was like all the Power Rangers in one, and was awesome. Let me just tell you that Ultraman was mm -hmm. part of my childhood. Like, what? That's that's the right. UHF that's the right era. That, that you could barely <laughs> tune in, but you could get some mm -hmm. some kung fu action. Now with, with the space. I mean, I I love his design, but I didn't grow up with it. I have no no fondness for. Is that it. number one of the series? Yeah, no, no. Number, number one two? has been out. Four. This is number four. four. We sold out of number one to people. Mm -hmm. About ten years older than me. <laughs> he always kind of reminded me of the Rocketeer a little bit. If you guys remember mm -hmm. the Rocketeer, he always looked like the Rocketeer to me. And that's honestly, when I was younger, I'd always get them mixed up in my head. So, Lord knows well, what I was talking about back then. I get, why they, I get yeah. why they started a new series. Like, there's kind of like a uh, like a Gundam Renaissance going on yeah. right now. Like, I well, and also are super in the mix. Obviously, I mean, you got Giga and things like that. Mm -hmm. If, I mean, Marvel's doing it, so Marvel sees something there. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get a movie. Well, there one can is only one. hope. Well, Didn't there's a bunch of like old TV yes, shows from the mm -hmm. 70s. Yeah. I don't know. Good I mean, stuff. Be That's how it all shows. starts, too. Just I have no older idea. TV shows. I stopped watching TV Wait, before Susan was born. <laughs> really? No. Mando, you forgot. <laughs> Scarehood. Uh, Scarehood number two. Um, I mentioned this with issue one. I really like it. It's not for everybody. It's Irish. Uh, you have to read it with an I <laughs> with an Irish accent in your head. An Irish broke. Um, Wait, are you saying that we need to have a separate episode where you just read that comic to the camera in the Irish? <laughs> in, a, in a in a this is my Irish accent. Oh. <laughs> this is I, me trying so hard to have an Irish accent. That's that's very good. Describe. What's what's scary about? Uh, it is about a man, a single father, who has he's kind of joined with some other parents of his daughter's daycare in Ireland, um, and they're it's not it's it's not a church. It's like a town hall or whatever, an ancient town hall where they have their daycare, and it's haunted, and he's the only person who is seeing anything. And he's losing time, and it's it's very, it's good. It's not overly creepy, but there are very creepy parts of it. It sounds magically delicious. <laughs> Scary. Is, is it like adult oriented, or is like okay for kids? There's there's adult language in it. It's not violent, um, but the adult language is undercut by his little daughter trying to repeat him, <laughs> so she mispronunciates. That's a him word. You nailed it, bro. <laughs> okay, I, I never... say the cover. Mm -hmm. It might just be me with the, like the trees and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It looks like a heart, like a human heart. So I thought because it's kind of horror themed, mm -hmm. like maybe that was intentional. That's what I love about artwork like this. It's up to the viewer's, you know, own perception. So like where she might see it, a open chest and heart. I also I don't think she see, said anything about an open chest. That's what, I, that's what I, I mean, like, just the red and the yellows mixed in there. What yellow? Yeah, the yellow in the background, like right here. <laughs> but, like, you know, the branches of the trees kind of being those yeah, no, creepy veins. Like the and, microbial yeah. and, like, I see the aorta. I see and, it. Yeah, things like that. The wall. I was agreeing with you. 
And you, what right, part so next me. up is <laughs> uh, Seven Secrets. Seven Secrets. Hunter is really enjoying this. Yes. Mm. I think it's the only comic that she's actually reading. No kidding. Yes. What? Well, to be fair, she reads like manga. Manga uh, yeah. galore. Yeah. I say manga just for the fun of it, and she gets mad. Um, one thing I did notice on the Seven Secrets is fella on the cover kind of looks like um, oh god, not a, it's not Booster Gold, Invincible. Slightly just okay. the uniform and such. You I see it? Mm, maybe. Yeah. I mean, the costume, maybe. Short that, black hair, kind of spiky. And that's what stood out to me, at least. Um, and then we do have that variant. Mm -hmm. Raw Tober Chaw. What number is that? What issue number is that? Five. Good question. Yes, five. It is issue five. Moving next up. Uh, the J.J. Abrams Spider Man. Oh, yes. Which this is number five, and I believe it's the last Very one. Last one. Uh, people are hoping it's the last one. Ooh. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews. I personally <laughs> think it's a really cool, like, original story, like the concept and everything. You know, um, let me see how I can. Uh, ben Parker, um, son of Mary Jane and uh, Petro, um, passed down the mantle kind of to Ben Parker. Now he's Spider Man, much to his father's chagrin. A lot of wacky stuff happens. And. Up here, issue five, like you said, it's the last one. I think they're doing business with a evil baddie named Cadaverous. Mm -hmm, that sounds right. Yeah. I, pronounced it well. yeah, I did names. <laughs> That's a real word, right? Yeah. It is indeed a real Yo, word. Yo, I'm killing it tonight. Can I point out that the bad guys in the back have lens flare? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Really cool. So it's, a, it's an Abrams trademark. I'm just glad that J.J. Abrams was so busy with this comic that he had nothing to do with the Mandalorian. <laughs> I... That he was too busy with this comic to do anything with the Mandalorian. Much more... the first episode of season three. J.J. Oh, man. Did you just jinx us? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brian was so serious. No. -uh. That was All good, right. dude. Hot comic. Strange Academy. Ooh, Strange Academy. I believe it's number six. Um... I really like this from uh, all the cool teacher cameos that they've had so far. Um, that It's always a nice surprise. Good page turner. My favorite part about this run is it's based off New Orleans. And anyone who spent time in New Orleans, when they go to actual places, like the French Quarter, or go step out and get like beignets and stuff, it's super cool to see like, you know, just familiar places. Like, oh, it's in a comic book now, but the school is located in kind of like... Uh, secret magical right. garden. Next, I'm thing. sure it's next to a cemetery. Yes, 100%. Um, but yeah, I, I really appreciate that about this run. And not to correct you or anything, but people in New Orleans pronounce <laughs> it New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. What did I say? Well, most everybody else pronounces it the way you did New Orleans or New Orleans. Oh. But in pe people in New Orleans pronounce it New Orleans. I've heard them say Nolans. Yeah, some people pronounce it like that. My, friend, my friend from Harry Nola. Nola, I hear Nola. Pronounce that correctly. Well, so, like, you're saying, you talk about, like, these teacher cameos and stuff like that, but, like, what IP is it? Like, what, what kind of teachers are we going to see? Um, okay, so think of all the magical people that deal with, you know, uh, just uh, the dark dimensions and stuff in the Marvel Universe. We're talking, you know, the OG Doctor Strange. It's called Doctor Strange. Where are the in it, right? Is uh, Hellstrom in it? Hellstrom's definitely in it. Um, he's going to be one of the teacher cam <laughs> uh, cameos. Uh, Brother Voodoo. Unfortunately, I think our homeboy is not in it. Um, it. It's New Orleans, and Brother Voodoo is not in it. Dude. That doesn't make any sense. I mean. Is he alive? I didn't know if he was alive in the current company. So. It's hard. Yeah, no, he is, because he was in the Damnation story arc last year. I've read, like, four out of the six issues, bud. <laughs> and I'm sorry to this point. But, yeah, Magic's one of the um, teachers. Who else we got? We got um, Wanda, of course, Scarlet Witch. Um, dropping by, giving some lessons. Like I said, I've read four out of the six issues. I'm trying to remember exactly all the cameos. But yeah, super cool cameos from X-Men. You know, you got... Is this Magic in it? Yeah, he did say yeah. Magic was in it. Oh, magic? Say, yes. Magic's in it. You're too busy with... chatting. I was telling Rose about an important thing. <laughs> um, shoot, man. Yeah, all, all the cool characters. What uh, about the kids? Because I know they introduced a lot of kids in this. Like, oh, there's, yeah. There's like kid dormammu doyle yeah. dormammu doyle. The, the fellow with the big flaming head um you got the daughter of like one of the biggest baddest frost giants in the mix uh 
Ooh, man, you guys are... Yeah, these books were hot because they had so many new characters yeah, uh -huh. coming out. Yeah, a lot of first appearances. Years, so. Mm -hmm. so catch up on that. And honestly, I mean, even in the sixth issue, I'm sure they're going to introduce someone new. Like I said, all about those cameos. You never know who's going to pop up in this one. Sure. And as a, as a side note, I watched the first episode of Hellstrom, mm -hmm. and I hated it. No! Yeah, I hated it. it was... What did you hate the most? Uh... The hell or the strum? <laughs> <laughs> I hated, like... I can't even think of anything redeeming. I was I was Usually, waiting for you like, to say I, everything. I can't think like you know it's, it'd be easier for me to pick out the things that I liked about it. Did like I don't know. Um, and to uh, I also like I started watching it. Um, I I liked it more than he did. Uh, but to go back to what Savage was talking about, like how she doesn't have horns. She's mm -hmm. got that haircut that like it really insinuates yeah, horns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I really didn't pick up on the haircut thing, kind of, yeah, to insinuate the horns until like my second go around. There are some, it gets better as you get into it, but I'll preface this for you guys and everyone watching at home. I am, as far as on screen adaptations go, I am the easiest fella to please. Um, as long as I see some names, there's some telekinetic fighting going down, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied. All right. So we have two more variants of Strange Cattery, right? Two variants and the main cover. You're welcome. <laughs> What's next? Uh, after Strange Academy, Star Wars? Star, Star Wars, Wars number nine. Uh, I think this is our last copy, and it is a variant. It is the, it's the toy variant. Um, I read it last night. I appreciate this Star Wars because of where it's placed within the Star Wars timeline. And to avoid being made fun of for my, like I did my foible last week, I'm not going to go too much into detail, but it has all your favorite characters like Lando, Leia's in there tossing around orders, or orders, C-3PO's being, you know, having his little anxiety attacks left and right, and they're, um, what do you got? There. It just kind of sounds like you've never actually seen Star Wars. What? Is, oh no, <laughs> I've seen Star Wars. Of course, I've got seen all it. your favorites. They're doing this and that. Yeah, they're doing. They're, you know, they're playing their part. They're being their characters, and it was. Nice and refreshing Rubio's to see. being a robot. Yeah, yeah. Did you know um, he's actually prefers Android? Yeah, they're called droids in Star Wars. Buddy. Well, I'm not in Star Wars. Boom, one for Ruben. I love the Who's keeping figure, score? Uh, the action figure. Mm -hmm. Those are my favorite. That's the dude in one of the bands, right? Yes. Yeah. Plays the organ? <laughs> no, he plays the uh, oh, like bassoon yeah. thing. Yeah, a super bassoon. A instrument. Yeah. Space bassoon. Next to that, Next Endless Winter. Oh, Endless this Winter. is a Superman, Superman. Yeah. Endless Winter. This is a good one. Uh, this is probably my favorite of the three Endless Winters thus far. Really? Yes. Um, this gets same thing as like the Flash issue where it's Flash dealing with like his stuff and like uh, this is Superman. He visits Lois and she's like, "You take care of this. I'll take care of this." These people, you know, just like with Star Wars, where these people are doing this. <laughs> um, Sometimes uh, Superman, Superman goes does to, uh, you know, look over his parents, which I guess John Kent is alive. His dad's alive in this continuity. Do you yeah, guys know that? Well, yeah, it's like a different. Yeah, it's um, it's confusing, and we don't have time for that. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he goes to the Kent farm, and they're just like, "No, you go be Superman." Crypto is there on the farm protecting them from these frost giant monsters. It's a lot of fun. And we do have a variant of that, right? A beautiful variant. I do love that variant. His eyes are glowing like he's about to laser someone down. I dig it. Um, next up is Sweet Tooth? Yes. No. Sword. Oh, sword. sword. Awesome. Sword number one. Super excited for this. After the mutants' uh, great success with um, building their civilization on Krakoa, they're like, Let's hit outer space, see how far we can reach in the galactic uh, realm of the Marvel Universe. So S.W.O.R.D. forms up, and that's where they're headed. This is number one. Some good appearances. You might want to check it out. I don't want to spoil anything for you, so I'm not going to. Oh. Again, I'm still super behind in the X-Men book, so it'll be a while. It's cool. It'll be a while before I get there. Um, hmm? Dalton Cross wants the Superman and this winter. Which cover? Uh, regular or the super cool variant, Dalton. All right. Well, when he gets back to us, we oh, okay. help him out. Probably last. So, right. so let's go ahead and pull these up. That was it, right? Mm -hmm. 
Come on, man. Who wants the regular cut? Come on. Get on over here. This one. Well, that cover is really neat. Yeah, it's pretty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'll grab all my stuff here. I saw this earlier today and someone called him Homelander. I was like, you're kidding, right? Don't disrespect Superman like that. I see where they got it from, but I'm I, like... All I can wait. I, I need the boys season three. Yeah. I need it. I was not as impressed with season two as I was with season no, one. Spoilers. I haven't been able to watch it yet. Okay. I, season two is still good. Don't get me wrong. But not as excited. Cool new characters, though. Season two was awesome. Yeah, it was cool new characters. That was my favorite part. Well, you missed some. Oh man, I'm blaming you, even though they're on my side. Nah, man, I totally should be blamed. It's cool. <laughs> it's Star Wars. Is, it, is there anything behind that Star Wars? Here? Which one is that? No, it's Star Wars. Oh, nope. There's nothing behind anything else. No, we're good. Okay. We'll no, see it up there because it's a cool cover. Right. Do you dig it? To the fall. Oh, right? More sword. More sword. Is that another variant? Yep. Can't have a Marvel number one without 20 covers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we already went over sword, so. No, well, I know. I, got you. I was waiting for you to start talking. My bad, buddy. From uh, the mind of Jeff Lemire. It's got Sweet Tooth. Yes. Um, the Return. For those who have not read, because I know we talked about Sweet Tooth last time, um, when the first issue came out, having read the second issue and not remembering much from the original. <laughs> Uh, run because that was like 15 years ago, if not longer. Um, it was not that long, it was a long time ago. I didn't have gray hair then. <laughs> um, you don't have to have read the original series to enjoy this because this is this has a lot of references to the original series, but at the same time, it's done like in a mysterious way. Sweet Tooth is, has no memory of the past, it's really, really good. Yeah, I enjoyed it too. It's kind of like a restart. And like you were saying, I had not read the, you know, the first run of Sweet Tooth, but in order to get kind of a feel for things, I kind of compared that synopsis to what I read in this. And I was like, yeah, and it's like he's being haunted by these memories of the past. Like he kind of knows, like he was almost brainwashed. He's still got little snippets mm -hmm. in his brain. It's very good. If you are a fan of the great Jeff Lemire, blah, 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 you say the same thing. No. no, it hasn't. No, I'm not even sure if they've started production yet, but it is being produced by Robert Danny Jr. No way! Mm -hmm. It is in the making, so cool, man. Mm -hmm. I'm stoked on that. Just no yeah. telling when it's coming. Um, the Dark Multiverse? Verse? Tales from the Dark Multiverse Flashpoint, Flashpoint. Edition. It's really good. Really good. Like, if, like, It's probably my favorite Flash story. No kidding. Nice. Not having been like a huge Flash reader to begin with, most of my flash comes from the Justice League, but this was awesome. Who's the writer on that? Flash. <laughs> flash. Is it Hitch. Barry Allen, or is it uh, <laughs> Wally West? Uh, yeah, I don't know who Hitch is, but it was really, yeah. I mean, basically, if you are familiar with the Flashpoint story, this picks up where the Flash and Thomas Wayne are trying to give, or Barry Allen and Thomas Wayne are trying to give uh, him his flash powers, and it fails. And then so uh, Reverse Flash is there to, he starts, he, he makes the war between the Amazons and the Atlanteans like worse. It's pretty awesome. I like that. Trouble a Bruin. It's it's good. And then also picks up that, uh, is that from Flashpoint as well, where uh, the government had Superman caged up and was Ooh, that in that story arc, or was that a different Superman elsewhere? That sounds familiar, but I'm not 100% if that was Flashpoint or not. Anyway, it's really good. You would know better than If I. you're reading the Dark Multiverse stories, this is my favorite so far. Even though the Hush one was really good. I didn't get to read that one. Do we still have that here? Probably not. Yeah, I figured as much. We can check. A lot of people were talking about it. That's why I was like, all right, so next in line. When you do that, that means wrap it up, Reuben, right? Just move it on. All right, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm... We need the baseball hand signals we were talking about. Next one up, Terminal Punks 2, um, something I was super excited about by Mad Cave, mm -hmm. um, publisher. Uh, the first one, just to keep caught up, I, I think we mentioned last week, 
basic premise, punk rock band on their way to a show, get stopped in a terminal, terminal shut down, unbeknownst to them, there's some monsters there. Some uh, multi-billionaire had some mutated monsters that escaped down there. And it's pretty cool. I like the uh, callback. I was a little concerned about how the first issue ended. But this second issue, I'll let you know, totally did away with all of my concerns. I didn't think it was... It ended on a kind of lame note, just abruptly, like, oh, we got nothing else to say this week. <laughs> See you next week or next month in the next issue. Are we but done? No, no, no. I was talking about, no, oh. I was talking about Terminal Punks. Oh. Um, no, it was actually really good. I dig it. And I like um, the real life references to certain bands. They rock, you know, some of <laughs> my favorite bands, Patches. I think I said that last week, too. So <laughs> anyway, that's Terminal Punks. So do they reference the like specific songs during it, or do they just? Uh... No, nah, not really. It's kind of like those Easter eggs you catch in shirts and patches. Shirts, shirts and patches, and, and they're kind of like bland shirts and patches. So unless you really are paying attention, you wouldn't be like, "Oh, that's Amigo the Devil. That's cool. I listen to him. He's like number a million on my Spotify playlist." I don't listen to him often, is what I was saying, but yeah, I like him. Okay. <laughs> Rose is bored. Uh... The True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys, National Woo! Anthem. Mm -hmm. National Anthem is the second volume in that in that series. Uh, Gerard Way. I haven't read any of it. Honestly, I haven't been disappointed by anything Gerard Way or Gabriel Ba or the fellow doing artwork for this one has done. Um, all the spinoffs to the Umbrella Academy I've liked a lot, and I can't wait for the next ones to come out. I haven't taking the time to read this one yet, but um, Fabulous Killjoys. I know nothing about this universe. Yeah. Um, and my knowledge of it's very limited, especially me knowing exactly, you know, what Gerard Way is involved in outside of the comic book world. Um, the Killjoys was an album of his from his band, My Chemical okay. Remnants, and that's that kind of exciting. One of the concept albums? Yes, I do believe. And who knows whether or not it's got ties to the actual comic book. The easiest way to find out is to purchase them. Usagi, Usagi or Jimbo is next. Usagi. Usagi. Usagi, that's what I said. I didn't even want to take Sabbath. And, and classic, if you have been reading Usagi for the past 30 years, this is the newest one. Mm -hmm. uh, Finally, we Animated got... series coming to Netflix. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm so excited mm -hmm. about that. Yes. Value's going to go through the roof, pick up these new ones. Pick up these new ones. Next up is Venom. I don't know if you guys heard about um, what's going on in the Venom universe right now. No, I'm joking. Um, so um, this week's Venom's pretty awesome. I liked it a lot. If you're familiar with, with, with what happened in the first issue of King and Black, it picks up directly after that, just the moments after Eddie Brock's encounter with Null. And it's super cool. It's just like um, uh, the final thoughts of mm -hmm. a potentially dying man. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, I didn't spoil it because okay. it's you have no idea what happened. I have no idea what happened. I read the entire thing like three times. I don't know what happens. It's one of those issues where that Donny Cates is really good at, where it's you know a thirty-two page issue, but like if it was real time, it would be like one minute. Mm -hmm. Like it's that, and it reads really fast, and it's just fantastic. It's really good. Mm -hmm. King and Black is probably my favorite of the Marvel crossovers of the past few years. I'm not going to disagree with that, man. It's and the good. artwork is good in all of them so far. Mm -hmm. I think we got a variant or two. Oh, uh, yeah, there's a variant up there. And down here, we've got the newest Wonder Woman. It's not tied into the Endless Winter. I don't know why they're doing it's cool. everything else Endless Winter. Oh, you can see that. Uh, all right. <laughs> Keep my hand behind me. Um. So... Uh, that derailed my train of thought. One second. Uh, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Um, Seven sixty eight. Uh, I had something to say about that. Oh yeah, Wonder Woman. Cool little fight with uh, Deathstroke. Check it out. Oh, cool. Yeah, good little bot. I'm just waiting for two more weeks to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming on HBO Max. They're just mm -hmm. gonna stream it directly on HBO Max. That's yep. Interesting. Nice. Yep. And if you've got Wonder Woman fans in your home, we've got plenty of Wonder Woman gifts for the holidays, like that number one George Perez that we had last week, as well as nice Wonder Woman mm -hmm. beanie, as well as other Wonder Woman products. Loads of Wonder Random. Woman merchandise. What is what is that? And back issues. Last one. Year zero. 
Is that one? Is that the last one was this? Oh, that's still Star Wars. That's what happens that, when you leave bro, it down. Man. I'm going to say that wasn't me. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the hit. Uh, year Zero. Um, this is the second issue of the second volume. Read the first issue. Yes, read the first issue of the second volume. I really love the story setting up. If you're familiar with the first volume, it's pretty much uh, the same style where there's five different people spread across the globe and it's their story of survival it is really cool and kind of gave me some ideas for my own doomsday prepping myself uh, apparently fellas in norway got this whole doomsday thing planned down to a t or at least year zero leads me to believe they're doing all right in norway but yeah year zero is really good that's why they have the uh, seed, the seed yeah. oh yeah that's right yeah. for if every, everything really hits the fan also, you know so where they have, where they're storing all of the radioactive waste. Isn't that where the large hydrogen collider is too? No, okay. I thought it was, Norway, no? No, I think that's in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Uh, the last non-trade paperback or back issue we have is uh, piecemeal. Uh, Aftershock Comics is launching a Horror one-shot series. That's the word. Uh, the first one is written by Colin Bunn. The artwork is gorgeous. It's pretty creepy, and I enjoyed it. So it's like an anthology? Basically. Uh, I don't know if it's once a month or once every two months, but there will be an oversized, like if you were reading like any of the DC Black Label books, that magazine size, uh, they're going to be all like that. If you, They're $7.99? You put the seven, seven bucks. Yeah, yeah. six ninety nine, right? Yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, if this is any indication, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, where are we on the gore level in something like this? Uh, it's fairly gore. Yeah, not family friendly, not bite sized. Nice. Okay, that's something I'm looking into. The uh, the word piecemeal. Does that have anything to do with any of the story? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I look forward to finding out why. Or how? <laughs> For seven dollars. <laughs> All right, let's move to back issues. It's getting late. Back issues. All right. Rose has to go to bed soon. I feel you. Um, you still on us, Rose? I am, but I'm going there. Going there. I, I was taking them just to make sure they're gone this time, buddy. <laughs> trying to stay out of the way. Hey, man, you're never in my way. You guys didn't catch that. And now, back issues. For the back issues. I'm so excited about some of these. <laughs> Not excited enough to buy them. I have them. Oh, baby. Mm -hmm. Are you talking? Oh my gosh, you're talking about the second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know which ones I'm talking about. <laughs> We have been mining our back issues, trying to find any and anything interesting. Uh, we're trying to come up with brainstorm ideas for themes. I'll let you decide. And did you put the Batman, most of the Batman series up already? Yeah, that's, that's okay. That's all right there. Yeah, we're trying to come brainstorm themes and ideas for the back issues. If you guys, if our viewers at home have any ideas, anything they want to see, please let us know. Drop us a line. We'd be happy to oblige if we do have them. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to switch antiperspirants. Did I say that right? Sure. All right. It's not incorrect. Got some lovely Batmans. Batman. So, first up over here, we've got the Batman Spawn crossover one shot that came out in 94. Uh, to my knowledge, it has not been collected in any of the crossover collections through uh, DC or Image. So, it's only available in this, and this is in beautiful condition. Uh, 
If you are a fan, it is a must have. It is awesome. It's written by Frank Miller, artwork by Todd McFarlane. So, two legends of the industry. Super duo. For the low, low price of $18. Uh, next up, these two are awesome, are they not? Talk They're about so an awesome, awesome. crossover. Oh, How yes, awesome they are. <laughs> oh, I've, I've been reading Archie for almost 30 years. Um, I am a huge fan of Archie, and they did some really great crossover type things. Like, kind of like with the old, like, what's new Scooby Doo mm -hmm. series? You know, mm -hmm. They're bringing things. And it was just a lot of fun to bring in <laughs> the Punisher. He was uh, an obvious choice for the Archie universe, for uh, sure. To chaperone yes. their prom. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, it's old. Can I spoil it? No, no. I haven't no. seen it yet. Okay. Because I know they're going to make a movie. It's coming. Sure. It's, gonna be, yeah, are they? it's probably going to be on Hulu. Yes. It's going to be on Hulu, well, and it's okay. going to be a dark I'll humor just, adaptation. Of, know, I'll just say it, it's, it's going to be Riverdale. The reason for him being there is actually legitimate. It's it's not ridiculous. It's the Riverdale Mafia. <laughs> it's, no, it's, 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 it's not Archie, Jughead being a werewolf, is it? Archie couldn't make payments on his jalopy, so the oh. had to come in. No, it's, <laughs> that's pretty. It's tons of fun. It's yes, full of fun. Um, got both issues. Both, bo it's the same story inside, just different covers. Uh, this one has a nice die cut. That's why it's a few dollars more. They're both in excellent condition. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, frameable. Uh, in a museum. Uh, all right, so we've got DC Comics presents Superman and Mr. Miracle. I get distracted when Rose is laughing for no reason. <laughs> it gets. I started too. talking about Archie, and we lost three viewers. <laughs> oh, uh, just out of curiosity, where are we at for viewers? Now that we're moving into the, do we pick up more while we move negative. into the back? Issues? We're back gotcha. into the negative. So, and we've got another DC cover, presents cover. Superman and Hawkman. These are always a lot of fun. Next we up, up a pretty big collection of like seventies comics this week, so we'll do a few issues from that. I think we got Silver Surfer number five. Everyone that knows me knows Nornrad is a, a spirit animal of mine. I do love the Silver Surfer for five dollars. Get a nice what is it nineties early nineties? That's uh, late eighties. Late eighties. That's issue three. We also have issue five, six, nine, nineteen, twenty-six. Oh, and the Silver Surfer Annual, which this is fun. If you are a fan of uh, mistakes, um, we've got that right there. And then behind it, we've got one that is off print. It's crooked. And it is like that. The cover is slightly slanted, and it's very noticeable on the back. So that's a lot of fun. So it's a misprint. It's a misprint. Mm -hmm. Doesn't change the value of it. It's just fun. I look, they're a little more rare. And I was just like, yeah. We don't sell those. I'll definitely pick them Ooh. up. If you don't want this, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> the Richard Pryor that's in this looks nothing like Richard Pryor. Excellent. It's awesome. So that is the adaptation. It is the adaptation three. in one issue. The All contents in one issue. the contents of a 90-minute movie is in eighteen <laughs> pages. All yours for five dollars. Yes. And we got the Tomb of Dracula. It's, it's cheaper than the DVD. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> no. $2. Yeah, yeah, there's a dollar DVD. I think now. you can get the four pack for like five bucks. Tomb of Dracula. First collector's issue over here for $13. Let me know if you want an up close look at that one too. In pretty primo condition. All right. We got Superman number 399. The man who saw super, yeah, man who saw Superman die. One of the it? many, I can't tell you. Okay. That's the surprise. He's the guy with the baseball hat. Uh, Spider Man number 130. That's Peter Parker Spectacular. Sorry. There's too many Spider Mans. There are a lot of Spider Mans. There's tons. funny story about Spectacular Spider Man this week. Somebody came in, and I had no idea that this was a. A hot issue, but apparently uh, Peter Parker Spectacular, what was it, 176 and 177? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Are the first appearances of a villain named Corona. And she apparently spreads disease everywhere. That's wild. Something. And yeah, so 
those issues are now that's novel right, right. <laughs> oh. oh you yeah. rose so spectacular spider-man there's a few hot issues mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think 298 is going crazy the, too because the King Marvel Wolf Tales King. sensational, yeah, sensational Spider Man. This is the two Death of Gwen Stacy issues in one. And this is in excellent condition. The spine is gorgeous. So if you need to reread it in the 1990s format, there you go. Star Wars number 29. Um, I forget the name of this character. He was a comic created character for Star Wars. And he was also in, when Marvel got Star Wars back, they brought him back as well. So he's, yeah. they did a, finished up his story arc. Actually, I think he's in the Bounty Hunter series. Yes. Yeah. 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 He's like cyborg, you know, hates Darth Vader for yeah. some, you know, <laughs> for some, some reason. reason. Like, <laughs> it's a very good reason. You know, and, yeah. Next up. The original Star Wars comic. I mean, yeah. you know, they were, yeah. they were what they were. Yes. You know? we, we, there was the green bunny rabbit, right? The green bunny rabbit, which yeah. we don't usually talk about. <laughs> I... What's his name? Nobody talks about it. <laughs> Nobody talks about it. It's not that important because no one knows. Um, next up, Paper Girls. Paper Girls, number one. First issue. Number one. We found a couple of those in our closet, and they are, it is awesome. If you haven't read Paper Girls, it is the funnest book of the last few years. And it is getting an Amazon series yeah. produced by, no, produced, show run by Christopher Cantwell, who is currently writing Dr. Doom. Paper Girls is kind of uh, like a Stranger Things y kind, it's very, of, yes, kind of comic. And very Stranger very Things y, but That's with fun. time travel. Yeah, yeah. Brian K. Vaughn is the writer. Yes. Uh, author of Saga. Saga, the greatest comic ever. <laughs> and Why the Last Man. And Why the Last Man. Yeah. And, One of the greatest comics ever. Ex, ex Machina. One of the greatest comics ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. And he also wrote for Lost, the TV show. Did, you know? did he? I didn't oh, know that. Really? Yeah. He wrote a really good run on Swamp Thing. Mm -hmm. Basically, everything he touches turns into gold. He created the Runaways. Yes. Yes, he did. Yes. Um, like the Runaways? Yeah. That I didn't know about. That's Not Joan cool. Jett. No, come on now. I barely know who that is, man. I thought she was a Blackheart, not a Runaway. Well, she was a runaway, then she was a black heart. That one came first? Yeah. Runaways came first. And she... Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Little history Girls on Joe and Jet. Home. But Paper Girls, this is a number one. $25. There's a little bit of uh, damage along the spine, but this book is only going to go up in value. What's next? What is over there? Uh, and Night Quest. Oh. Three, concert, three issues. Um, I have come across <laughs> Batman... 496 through 505. So I have 10 issues of the Nightfall story arc. We all have. He's got them back, back here. here. I think he's trying to buy them himself. Yeah, well, yeah, a little bit. Um, But no, of course, I want to show you guys some of the amazing things we have. Can I pop them up here? Is there sure. We can pop them. Um, the key issues in this is oh. 497. That is the breaking of the bat. And then 500, simply because that is issue 500. So, I had a couple people ask for more 90s Batman. So I found these and I was like, "This it doesn't get more 90s Batman. Uh, but my favorite of the Batmans that I came across this week is issue 424. And if you're not familiar with what this issue is, this is the issue where Jason Todd, Robin at the time, may or may not have um, committed murder, maybe? Can we get a good shot of that? You want to hold that up to the camera? So we can... Occupational hazard when you're a cape, cape crusader and mass uh, superhero. Sometimes there's a collateral. Robin's you chasing know? a thug. Sometimes collateral. He falls to his death, and Batman is like, Did he fall? And then <laughs> Robin doesn't say anything. Yeah. I picture yes, my. Now I kind of want to have an episode of you just reading like <laughs> Batman. Well, Batman. if I, you keep me talking for two hours, it's going to happen. We can make it happen. But yeah, no, this Start is. Start working just, on characters. This is just awesome for that 
I mean, two issues later is when the uh, the death in a family story. So he lets a guy die, and Batman's like, okay, you can die. <laughs> I don't know if it was quite well, you, you voted on that, right? I did. What was your vote? I voted to kill Jason Todd. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Can I know why you might have chose to kill Jay? Jason Todd deserved it. True that. <laughs> he <laughs> let people if you die. Read that issue, you'll know. No, I mean, like, I can kind of. He was stealing Batman's tires. Yeah. Mm. No, he was really an annoying character. You know, like the. I I get it though. It's the principle of the thing. Like you Dam don't touch a man's Damien, ride. Yeah, da Damien is like a fun, annoying character, but. Yeah. Jason Todd, not. So, uh, that is it. Um, there weren't any spe any spectacular trades for the week. Yes. Uh, Jamie Tracy also voted for <laughs> Jason Todd. <laughs> Jason Todd to die. I don't think I've met anybody who voted for him to live, even though it was a very close vote. Uh, Dalton yeah. would like that issue. Yes. Nice. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. Ugh. Dude, you know... <clears throat> I'd be more than I hope that, I hope so that you grunt was really loud. <laughs> it was, yeah, dude, it was right <laughs> over it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Good sound effects. Well, that about wraps it up. If there's anything anyone else wants to see real quick, give you a quick and close up. Um, uh, catch up with us next week. Same time, same place. And again, if there's any back issues that you are looking for, any runs, any more Batmans, any more Silver Surfers, any more anything, I will see what I can find. Just let us know. Please let us know. So for the dark side, I'm Ruben. And I'm going home. <laughs> you have an excellent week. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye now.